Welcome. In front of me is a Samsung Galaxy A25 and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So to get started, let's open up our settings. And we're going to begin with the display section right over here, which will provide us with a bunch of different options that I want to show. So starting off, we have light and dark mode. We have this option, I believe, throughout the setup, but under that, we actually have the dark mode settings. And this allows us to have it automatically change from light to dark mode based on the time of day or on a custom schedule, which is a pretty nice option that isn't visible throughout the setup. So you can see that it automatically picks a time, but it can change that. And it will basically vary swap between these two modes automatically, which is a pretty nice option. Though for the video, I am going to keep it in light mode. Next below that, we have motion smoothness. Here we have two different options. We have the 120 Hz refresh rate and the standard, which is 60. Now for majority of the people, I will recommend to keep it probably on the high, which is the 120, just because it will give you a nicer uh, image quality when you're scrolling up and down. It's just going to feel nice, buttery smooth. But for people that just want to prioritize battery life and maybe you just tend to read a lot of books on your phone, uh, so your screen tends to be on quite a lot, but you don't really utilize the high refresh rate, uh, you might want to select standard. This will give you a little bit of a better battery life uh, while removing that nice smooth uh, scrolling like animations when you're scrolling up and down. It will give you a better battery life. So obviously you sacrifice something, but for people that tend to, for instance, read books, this basically has no effect. So anyway, um, moving on to the next one is going to be the screen mode. Now, Samsung tends to have all their devices set to vivid mode just because they probably look better, more enticing in the store along the lines of other devices that don't have a vivid mode. The colors tend to pop out, obviously, with this mode. And for me, at least personally, I don't really like it because in certain cir circumstances, it is overdone, like right over here. Uh, the colors right here are just way too unnatural, so I do prefer the natural look which tones it down just a little bit and you can turn it on and off just to see how it affects it there's also another image that can look at it uh, now in certain images it might not look as nice uh, but i'm looking for something that is just more uniform and you know follows the logical color scheme rather than this uh, super saturated colors that basically glow which don't really look good, for instance, like I said, in this specific image, they just look hideous. Now, moving on into another option, it's going to be the edge panel. And you can see it all the time right here. It is enabled by default. So if I close this, you can kind of see this little bar. You can pull it out. And it gives you a couple of applications that you can, you can access from here. Now, the ones that are right here will automatically swap based on it, your most recent applications, while the ones below are ones that you can add yourself and edit them. Now, you can tap on the edit button and add significantly more applications in here just to kind of demonstrate this. And these are all the apps that I can add because those are all of them. So from here, I'm just gonna go back and you can see that we have now an entire panel full of apps. Now, this might be a little bit extensive. Uh, you probably don't want to add all your apps to this panel, uh, but it gives you a nice access to it whenever you want to maybe split screen an application or have it in a pop-up view. You can pull that panel out and, for instance, grab your application, drag it, and depending on where you drop it, you can drop it in the middle. This will open it up in a pop-up view. You can scroll it down. This will open it up in split screen. As you can see, up or down, depending on you. You can also shrink it, move it around, and also hide it if you want to get rid of it. And it will be open in this app head. Now, additionally, there's also uh, additional options that I can do. And to display this, I'm going to open up two different applications. So let's go gallery and let's open up something else like, you know, settings, I guess, whatever. And you can see we have two different applications open. Now, if I pull out the panel, you can see it doesn't show it right here yet. But if I close this, it now shows the combination right over here. And you can grab it and then drag it below and add it to your applications that are permanently added here. Because like I mentioned before, this right here will only show you most recent applications. Hence, you can grab the app combo, drag it below and permanently keep it there. So now I can open up two different applications at the same time with just a single press of a button, which is a pretty nice and convenient thing. 
Now, if you have a bigger device like a tablet, as an example from Samsung, you can have like four different apps open at the same time and create a, create a combo like that. Uh, but this is a phone, so it limits me to only two applications. Now, anyway, moving on to another option, which will be the... Let's go back into the display. This will be the gesture navigation. I've been using buttons for this video, but you can select navigation bar in the display section and change it to swipe gestures. And this will get rid of the buttons and swap it for the gesture navigation. Now there's an additional option located in here, which is the gesture hint. As you can see, we have this little bar right here. If you toggle this off, it will hide the bar. Now I will warn you right away uh, from my experience uh, on my device, hiding the bar tends to create some problems uh, for specifically third party launchers. So if you're not using the Samsung launcher and you're using something like a um, Niagara launcher or any other ones, smart launcher, whatever it is, uh, it will sometimes make it so when you're swiping up home uh, from an application, it won't always register that swipe. So keep that in mind. If you encounter such a problem, just know that this is the gesture hint being hidden um, and it just kind of works like crap. On my device, this hasn't been fixed for nearly two years now, and I don't have a cheap device from Samsung. So it's not like they want to fix it, just because they want you to use their shit little uh, launcher that they have, which obviously this kind of entices people if they want to use some functions, like for instance, the uh, navigation bar that you have on the foldable devices that is at the bottom. You don't get that in a third party launcher, because why would you? any case, let's move over to the next option, which will be the adaptive sound, which can be located in the sound and I believe vibration. Yep, right over here. Scroll down and select sound quality and effects. And here you'll find adapt sound. You can toggle that on. Now, by default, it will opt into a under 30, but you can tap on the text itself, select allow, and you can customize it. If you're older, you can select your uh, age, age range. For me, uh, I would be basically in the middle one, but I don't recommend using the preset ones. What I recommend doing is selecting the add personal sound profile. Now this will only work if you have some earbuds. So you'd have to grab your earbuds, connect them to your device. That can be also over the ear, in ear, it doesn't really matter. Uh, also you can use wired because we do have a headphone jack, uh, but you do need to have something that is not going to be using the speakers themselves. Once you connect your uh, periphery, sound periphery, uh, you can then go through this setup. And what it will do is it will start playing a series of different low and high frequency pitches that all you need to do is select if you can hear them or if you can, just select you can. If you can, select but you can. And it will create a customized equalizer specifically to your hearing. Now this is done for hearing purposes, uh, but it has an additional purpose uh, that if you have some kind of cheap earbuds, as an example, uh, you didn't want to, you know, spend a $200 on your buds and you spend like 30. Uh, this will actually also improve the quality of those buds, even though they're cheap, because when going through the test, those buds will not be able to reproduce certain times the frequencies that the device will be playing. They will be too quiet for you to be able to hear them through these specific earbuds, just because they can't do that. So the device will boost up this specific sound and hence you might actually start to be able to hear them through those earbuds. And hence it will actually improve the quality of the sound that they are able to produce. So it might be a nice thing to uh, go through this. It's only gonna take you like two minutes and once you go through it, it's all done. Now, uh, if you go through this, there is a message that you will be presented with to be in a very quiet environment the sound that you will be hearing is very quiet so if you have like some cheap earbuds you might not be hearing too much of it uh, so it is very important to be in a environment that is has some kind of you know, sound control so you can hear or not hear basically all the noise around you so if you're in an office with a air conditioning running it probably would skew the results you'll be getting from this. Additionally, obviously, if you go outside with your headphones or earbuds and you try to do this uh, in like traffic or stuff like that, you most likely won't be able to hear anything. So in that case, this wouldn't really work. 
So like I said, just be in a quiet environment and then go through this. Anyway, this would conclude that week's end tricks that I want to show you, so if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and thanks for watching.